We're going to continue with this. Let's um, open to Acts chapter 10. Uh, start at verse 17. On the one we ended with last time. We'll read through the end of the verse, uh, end of the chapter. While Peter was deeply perplexed about the vision, about what the vision he had seen might mean, the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions to Simon's house, stood at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was named, also named Peter, was lodging there. While Peter was thinking about the vision, the Spirit told him, Three men are here looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and accompany, accompany them with no doubt at all, because I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men and said, Here I am, the one you're looking for. What is the reason you're here? They said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who has a good reputation with the whole Jewish nation, was divinely directed by a holy angel to call you to his house and to hear a message from you. Peter then invited them and gave them invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and set out with them. Some of the brothers from Joppa went with him. The following day he entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, fell out his feet and worshipped him. But Peter helped him up and said, Stand up, I myself also am a man. While talking with him, he went on in and found that many had come together there. Peter said to them, You know it's forbidden for a Jewish man to associate with or visit a foreigner. But God has shown me that I must not call any person common or unclean. That's why I came without any objection when I was sent for. So I asked, Why did you send for me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago, at this hour, at three in the afternoon, I was praying in my house. Just then a man in a dazzling robe stood before me and said, Cornelius, your paper, your prayer has been heard, and your acts of charity have been remembered in God's sight. Therefore, send someone to Joppa and invite Simon, who is also named Peter. He is lodging in Simon the Tanner's house by the sea. Therefore, I immediately sent for you, and you did the right thing in coming. So we are all present before God and to hear everything you have been commanded by the Lord. And Peter began to speak. In truth, I understand that God doesn't show favor to them. But in every nation, the person who fears him and does righteousness is acceptable to him. He sent the message to the sons of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know the events that took place throughout all Judea, beginning, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and curing all who were under the tyranny of the devil, because God was with him. We ourselves are witnesses of everything he did both in Judean country and in Jerusalem. Yet they killed him by hanging him on a tree. God raised up this man on the third day and permitted him to be seen. Not by all the people, but by us. Witnesses appointed beforehand by God who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to solemnly testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the king of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that through his name, everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who had heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come on Peter were, who had come with Peter were astounded because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speaking in other languages and declaring the greatness of God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold water and prevent ye from being baptized? Who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to pray for you. And just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, as we dig into your word, Lord, I ask for your favor, Lord. I ask, Lord, that I decrease and you increase, Lord, that, that your word falls on the fertile soil, Lord. Lord, as we talk about doing the word of God, not just hearing the word of God, Lord, I ask that you 
open up our ears so that we can hear and then move our feet so we can do it. Lord, I pray that that you just be with us this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I stumbled with a few different message titles with this, you know, being a doer, hearing and doing, and also but God. You know, I, I, I kind of shifted through, so so we might shift through, shift a little bit, shift around, jump around, amen? amen. Peter heard the word of the Lord. He heard God. He saw a vision <coughs> with the sheep, declaring all things clean, declaring that everything that that they had been raised up, the tradition that they had had from the beginning, well, from, from the time of Moses, that there was a shift, that there was a change, that there was something new that God was doing, that salvation wasn't only for the Jews, but it was for the Gentiles as well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I, know, I know it's good news for me. Amen? <laughs> yeah. Verse 17 says, Peter was deeply perplexed. While searching out the meaning of the vision. He was chewing on it. He was thinking about it. He was meditating on it. He was rolling over, mulling over the word of God. You know, he had heard this word and he was mulling over. He was going over. Have you guys ever read the word and then just didn't understand so you thought about it? And thought about it. And prayed about it. You know, prayed, it. Prayed, about it. prayed about it. Thought about it. And sought out the Lord in the meaning of it. That's what Peter was doing here. He was seeking out the Lord. He was chewing on it. He was rolling it over in his mind because he didn't fully understand what God was doing there. He didn't fully understand the, the impact of what was going on. He didn't understand the vision. So he rolled it over. He molded it over. He chewed on it for a bit. And as he was chewing on it, as he was chewing on it, realized that it's not a word to just hear. That it wasn't a word to just hear and sit back and watch it unfold. This was an action. This was a word that, that Peter had to hear, but he had to hold on to and he had to go. This was, a, this was a word from the Lord that required action. This was a word from the Lord that required doing. Let's turn to uh, James 1 real quick. Hold, hold on your place right there, though. I want you guys to turn with me because this is a very important scripture. It's very, very, very important to, uh, to hear and understand. <coughs> Starting at verse 22. But be doers. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Okay, check this out. Be doers of the word, not only hearers. Deceiving yourselves. Amen. Deceiving yourselves. So, if I take this in, if I listen to the word, if I hear the word, and don't do anything about it, I'm deceiving myself. You know, there's a guy, a bald headed guy, good looking. <laughs> He moved to Florida. <laughs> Amen. You hear where I'm going with this, right? Amen. You feel me? All right. So, so he moved to Florida. Real skinny guy. Real, real skinny guy. But as he moved to Florida, not as he lived in Florida, he wasn't so skinny. He started gaining a little bit of weight. And and he gets these ideas in his mind. He's wild. Not only is he good looking, but he's weird. Strange, strange, strange fellow. But he gets these ideas. You know, he doesn't want to be heavy. So he reads books and, and he reads articles. He reads about um, cutting sugar out and cutting out bread. He reads about eating the right thing and he reads about doing this and he reads about working out. He reads about working out. He reads about working out an awful lot. <laughs> he reads a whole lot about it. You know, he's got this plan set up, and he does it for one day, and then something happens, and he gets distracted, and he takes this plan and does it for another day, and nothing ever works out. 
<laughs> the thing is, is the results aren't going to come in, in this great guy's life in the diet plan unless he puts it into action. Unless he reads it and applies it. He's not going to reach his, his, his workout goals if he's just reading about working out. He's not going to reach those goals until he, he takes the words that are on the page and starts to put them into action. See, he can get deceived into thinking that just reading about it and, and watching other people do it, that it's of some benefit to him, but it's not of any benefit. You know, the same thing applies to the Word of God. You know, years ago, all these diets came out. South Beach, Atkins, all these. Take out this, take out that. Take, da, da, da. And, and they're all good in theory to read about and to watch. But, you know, if you slip just a little bit, it throws you all the way off. Right? You guys ever realize that, even with the Word of God? You slip just a little bit. And it throws you all off. You know... One thing with dieting, everybody wants a cheat day, right? Yeah. I get one day that I get to eat whatever I want. And you take six days and you do good, and then you get that cheat day, and you set yourself back like three weeks. Amen? Y'all know about it. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You take that cheat day and you just run with it. And the next thing you know, oh, I'll just take my cheat day early this week. And then, well, I'm going to take next week's cheat. And the next thing you know, you don't even know what you're doing. Well, see, the same thing happens with the Word of God. You, you take it and you have to apply it to your life. He says, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. See, that's how we deceive ourselves. It's just by, by reading the pages and not applying it. By, by knowing it. I mean, it's, it's awesome to know. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't read it. But I'm saying take it and run with it. See, Peter had a vision from God, and he could have sat on that vision. Cornelius, he had a vision from God. But he didn't sit on it. What if they would have just sat on it? What if God was telling them to do something and they didn't apply it? It says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. <laughs> this isn't anything anybody else is doing. You know, if I'm not applying those diets and those, those exercises to my life, I'm only deceiving myself and thinking I'm going to get healthy. You know, if I don't take this word and apply it to my life, I'm only deceiving myself that I'm going to stay solid for the rest of my life, right? I'm deceiving myself that the word of God is going to work in my life if I don't apply it. But don't just be hearers, but be doers. Verse 23 says, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and right away forgets what kind of man he is. Man. Read about it and don't do it. The following the word of God takes action. It takes not just sitting on your, your, your butt and reading and reading and reading and reading. And reading. You know, the first two months that, that guys are in set free, we, we apply them, you know, basically, you're reading the word of God, you're in the word of God, you're hearing the word of God. Da, 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 da. After a couple months, you start to get to go out in the community. You know, you know, after 45 days, you get to go to the food bank and you get to see people and, and see people in action, other ministries and other things are going on. And then you get to find it. You know what? A lot of people struggle once, once it's time to, to start applying it. You know, they're good as long as they're sitting in the Word and they're, they're absorbing the Word and absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. You know, because we're selfish people and we want to get fed and fed and fed and fed. But when it comes time to feed someone else... When it comes time to apply the word of God to our life, we don't want to do it. I'm going to read Romans 2.13 real quick. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. But it says, For the hearers of... Well, let's go back to 12 so we can get a little bit of, of a broader view. All those who sin without the law will also perish without the law. And all those who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For the hearers of the law are not righteous before God, but the doers of the law will be declared righteous. Amen? Taking the word of God and applying it to your life. 
taking the laws of God and applying it to your life, taking the word and letting it soak into you so you can be like a, a channel. Because that's what we are. We're channels. We're not meant to be like the stopping point of God's messages. We're supposed to be the like what God uses. We're supposed to be who God uses. We're supposed to be that part of it. Like, What if Peter didn't take this word of God and apply it? What if Cornelius sat on his butt and didn't do anything? He took action. You know what? This was, uh, this was a shift. Like we talked about last week, this was a change in what God was doing. See, salvation was only going to the Jews at that time. They were only preaching to the Jews. They weren't talking to Gentiles. Because there was that blockage. Remember we talked about the food being being a blockage, being a, a stumbling block in the midst of all this. So what if Peter said, no, God, I can't do that because it's unclean, it's on this, and I can't do it because your word, because you said before, what, you know, what if he wouldn't have put that into action? What if he wouldn't have taken that faith into action? It took Peter stepping out of his comfort zone and listening to the word of God. Now, applying the word of God to your life will step you out of your comfort zone. I guarantee you. Applying the word of God will, will take you places that sometimes you don't want to go in the flesh. You know, I don't think Peter really wanted to preach the, to the Gentiles because there was supposed to be a separation. Because tradition said there was separation. Because of where it came from, there was a separation. But God took that. Let's jump down to uh, verse 28. It says, Peter said to them, back in Acts, I'm sorry, Peter said to them, You know it's forbidden for a Jewish man to associate with or visit a foreigner. It's forbidden for me to do this, but I'm here. Right? This is forbidden. Now check out these two words. These are two of my favorite words when they're put together in the Word of God. What's it say? But God. But God. God it says, you know it's forbidden for a Jewish man to associate with or visit a foreigner, but God. You know, I had my traditions, I had my way of life, but God stepped in and changed my life. You had your way of life, you had your way of doing things, but God stepped in and changed your life. Peter was stuck in his ways, Peter was stuck in, but God came in and changed things. God comes in and he changes things, but God. Says, but God has shown me that I must not call any man common or unclean. My whole world is rocked. His whole world is rocked. The Gentiles are touched now. The Gentiles are able to hear the word of God. The Gentiles are able to hear the message of salvation. But God. But God. But God. But God. You know, one of my... <coughs> I know I had a thought process here, and it was there where I got, I get ahead of myself sometimes. Okay. But God, amen? amen. I had my own way that I was going to do this, I thought, but God. God. And he threw away his whole way of life, his whole tradition, because God spoke to him. He threw away his plans. And, and took on God's plans at the word of the Lord. At the word of the Lord. He, he knew that he wasn't supposed to associate with this. He knew that he wasn't supposed to, supposed to eat with these Gentiles, with these dirty people, with these unclean people. But God stepped in. But God stepped in. But God stepped in. Even in sin, we had our own way. Even in sin. We loved it, right? I loved it. I loved it when I was in it until sin took over and I, I was enslaved to it and, it and it destroyed me. But God stepped in. So Peter says, all right, so why did you send for me? Why? It says in verse 30, Cornelius replied, four days ago, at this hour, at three in the afternoon, I was praying in my house. Just then a man in a dazzling robe stood before me and said, Cornelius, your prayers have been <coughs> and your acts of charity have been remembered of God. <coughs> Therefore, send someone to Joppa and invite Simon here, 
who is also named Peter, he is lodging in Simon, the tanner's house by the sea. So he heard a word of the Lord. He heard the word of the Lord, correct? He was sitting there praying. He was seeking out the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him. So what did Peter say? Why did you send for me? Because God said, right here. Verse 33, listen to this. Therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? Since he heard from the God, from God, since he heard the word of the Lord, since he heard what God was saying, therefore, I immediately sent for you. He didn't just hear the word and sit on it. He, just, he didn't just hear what God wanted to do. He heard what God wanted to do and he took action. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Be a doer of what God's saying, not just a hearer. Don't just sit on your butt and, and absorb everything, absorb everything, absorb everything, and not ever give back. You know, following the Lord is about service and about sacrificing yourself for other people. It, it's not about my kingdom. It's not about your kingdom. It's not about this. It's about His kingdom. And, and the reason that he's calling you to do things, the reason why he's training you up to do things, the reason why he wants to be that channel is because he's got a bigger purpose than you. He has a bigger purpose than me. He has a big, bigger purpose than what we can even fathom. So when God tells you to do something, Cornelius, he didn't question. Cornelius didn't sit there and struggle and say, well, Lord, is this what I need to do? And I'm not saying that it's okay, not okay to chew on it for a bit. But sometimes we sit there and chew on it when it's obvious what we need to do. You know, there's times that we have to take action right now. There's times that we have to sit back. And the only way that you're going to know which is which is to have that intimate relationship with God. Without that relationship with God, you don't know what is a do now or what's a wait. And you don't know this, you know. Because you know what? Both are biblical. Both are biblical. So it, it takes that relationship. No man, it takes hearing. Cornelius, what does it say? Immediately I sent for you. And you did the right thing in coming. Cornelius knew what God said. Cornelius knew exactly what God said, and he took action. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have Google searches. They didn't have texting and, and, and long distance calls and all this stuff. But God, God still arranged for it. God still worked things out. God spoke to Cornelius. God also spoke to Peter. Man, it didn't take all the technology that we think we have to have to do this. We think we have to do that. And we think that we need this. And we think that we need that. God can get through all of it. God can break through this. And God can break through that. Peter obeyed. Cornelius obeyed. Man, what's God going to do now? Now that everybody's obeying. You know, he spoke to one side. He spoke to another. What's God going to do in this? You know, because there was a bigger purpose than just Peter. There was a bigger purpose than Cornelius. You know, it's like a few weeks back uh, when Philip was at the revival. You know, it's chilling. The revival is celebrating, loving God, and just loving what God's going on. And God says, go. Whoa, 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 whoa. There was a bigger purpose at hand. He had to go and preach to the Ethiopian. And when he went and preached to the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian took that word back to Ethiopia and the gospel spread. It was, it was, it was bigger than, than Philip celebrated and bigger than Philip having a good time. It was what God was doing. All right, let's go back to 27 for a second. It says, while talking with him, while talking with Cornelius, he went on in and found that many had come together there. He found that many had gathered, that many had come together. There was a crowd together. So, obviously, Peter stood up. It's time to preach the gospel. There's, there's all kinds of, you know, he listened and paid attention to what Jesus was doing. Do you remember going to the gospels? When there was a crowd, what did, what did Jesus do? He preached. He healed. He helped. He, he ministered. He ministered to, to what was going on. So Peter paid attention to that. You know, even though Peter was a knucklehead, you know, we heard that last Wednesday at the revival. Peter was, put, you know, what did that guy say? Sometimes he opened his mouth long enough to take one foot out and put the other foot in. You know, he, he didn't always think everything through. He didn't always go follow through with everything. But he still paid attention. He still paid attention. And when there was a crowd together, he knew what God said. Verse 34 says that Peter
Peter's began to speak in truth. I understand that God doesn't show favoritism. He understands that it wasn't about <coughs> Jew and Gentile. It wasn't about this and it wasn't about that. It was about what God was doing. When every nation, the person who fears him and does righteousness is accepted. The way that things were going weren't working but God stepped in. All inclusive. You know, this is in our culture of, of exclusive and inclusive and all this stuff, you know God is all inclusive? It doesn't matter where you came from. The gospel is open to you. The gospel is up to you. But it's it's the gospel. It's not your idea of what God might be saying. It's not your thought process of what God is saying. It's not your tradition that matters to God. What matters to God is the gospel because that's what changes lives. What matters to God is the gospel. Is the gospel. Because if you, when you break this down, it says he sent the message to the sons of Israel proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. And those side notes says he is Lord of all. You know the events that took place after the baptism, John preached. But God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how he went about doing good. Now check this out. And, and let me know if you guys can feel this, if you guys understand this. It says, curing all who were under the tyranny of the devil. Did you guys pick up on that when we were reading? That Jesus came curing all who were under the tyranny of the devil. Man, if that doesn't excite me, I don't know what it does. I mean, curing all who were under the tyranny of the devil. Man, I was under the tyranny of the devil. I was under the devil's thumb doing it. Everything that felt good to me, everything that, that I thought was right, you know, whatever I thought was right, I just went and did. That was under the tyranny of the devil. You know, at the beginning, the first song we played was, I am free. You know, I'm free to, to live for God. I'm free to live for Him. I'm free to dance. I'm free to run. I'm free to sing. <clears throat> I'm free to not be under the tyranny of the devil. Jesus Christ came to set us free from the tyranny of the devil. That, man. God stepped in. The all-inclusive gospel. The all-inclusive all this. You know, our all-inclusion it gets a little twisted. You know, you know, the Word of God does really good on its own until people start trying to interpret it. You know, people start trying to go this way and trying to go that way and trying to fit their lifestyle to the Word of God. You know, you know one of my favorite verses? All things are permissible. Oh, Amen. <laughs> But, not all things are and, But we want to take that <coughs> when, when living a life of God and that all-inclusive gospel that, that God gives us, the, the, His Son dying on the cross, His Son shedding His blood for our sin, means that it should change us. It should change us from the inside out. The Word of God should, should start changing us. That doing the Word of God will change us. The listening to the Word of God will change us. But not only don't just be listeners, but be doers. It's the gospel to save lives. John 3.16 For God so loved the world <coughs> that He gave His one and only Son. And whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's what changes me. The love of God changes people. The love of God is, is what changes us from that sinning, knuckleheaded people that we are into vessels usable by God. The gospel, the gospel, the gospel. That's what changes people. We were going our own way, but God stepped in. Peter was going his own way, but God stepped in. Scotty, he was going his own way. And then God stepped in. Amen. 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 Brian, he was going his own way, and then God stepped in. What, what changed you guys? Uh, God. The gospel. It wasn't God allowing you to do anything that you wanted to do, was it? No, because you came and got saved, and then your life changed. You came and got saved. You got impacted by God. That's what changed life. It's impacted the gospel. God's the love of the Lord. And whosoever believes in Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. 
Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For the power of God and the salvation for all who believe. Jew first. <coughs> Greek, Gentile, heathen. Amen. Peter preached the gospel. In verse 42 it says, He, being Jesus, <laughs> commanded us to preach to the people. Take God's word and apply it. He commanded us so we do. He commands us to do things so we do it. Don't just be a hearer of the word, deceiving yourself, but be a doer. When God gives you something, do it. When God gives you something, do it. You know, one of the biggest struggles that I, I see is that three guys is uh, 90 days ago, right? Because we all know the three months. I'm going to go get a job, I'm going to make money, I'm going to get a girlfriend, I'm going to get married, and I'm going to leave. You know, I've been under the tyranny of set three for so long. Amen. <laughs>
God was doing. I mean, this wasn't a bad thing. They were excited about what God was doing. You know, there's a lot of people that, that look at your life and they're excited about what God was doing. You know that? They're excited about what God was doing. You know, the, the, the pastors that come in and repeat, they brought them. They can't get enough. Bill Tyler, if we could have Bill Tyler preach every day and he, he wouldn't have enough. You know, you guys encourage them so much. Amen. You guys encourage what God is doing so much. They they come and they visit. Uh, Jimmy Flanagan. Some of you guys know. Well, we all should know where the Bible was. He filled in for Bill Tyler. Remember that Tuesday? Not too long ago, he filled in for Bill Tyler. I asked him, so I'd like it. But they were inspired at what God was doing. Just like these guys were. The Jewish believers, they were astounded. See, people are astounded at what God's doing in your life. The Holy Spirit's coming through. The Holy Spirit's changing your life. God's changing your life. And, and it's inspiring people. People are astounded. Check this out. You know, 
I, I, got, I know Brian and Cody got something out of that sometime. Hey, look at this. And they're like, yeah, I've heard that before. So, you know, you know. But I'm all excited. You guys ever get excited about what God's doing? Man. 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 You know, one thing we can look at is, is even if you've only been here a week, you know what? Last week, some of you guys weren't sober. Some of you guys were lost. Some of you guys were on the streets. Some of you guys didn't know where the next meal was going to come. Some of you guys weren't even worried about eating. Mm. Some of you guys were what God said. They weren't worried. Who would think about that? Ready to play, Harold? Yeah. Uh, now, this is like not my normal <laughs> song, but we're going to turn it up. Yeah, you get it? Oh, watch out. Oh, uh -huh. 